Hello, today we're going to look um, more at your game. Um, so we're in Unit 5, the second part. Last time you um, did some practice on hunting bug and bugs and sample code, so we're going to start doing some more coding now. <clears throat> so that's important that you um, get used to seeing what different kinds of errors are and working through those. Today we'll save your own personal game file and then begin to animate some of the game images. So the, remember the dimensions of your video game are 640 by 480 and each character is placed on the screen at a set of XY coordinates. So it's 640 uh, uh, 640 wide and 480 tall. Right? So you go a little bit in the X direction if you start at the lower left. So this is just like a math coordinate system. So your target, player, and danger each a move along the X or Y axis, having their X or Y coordinate changed according to an animation function. <clears throat> so this, this, this picture here shows the target moving left or right, so that's along the X coordinate. So the X coordinate same, stays the same, but it doesn't, um, in this example, it's not moving up and down, so its Y coordinate is going to stay the same. And this one, the player is moving up and down, but not left or right. So its X coordinate, which is 200 in this example, is staying the same, but its Y coordinate is changing from 240 or from, two, from 240 to 220. So these animation functions will start off simple. They take in the current X or Y coordinate and produce the next X or Y coordinate. So just like in um, you know, other animation, we don't have to think about all of the different moves. We just think of the small move from one place to another, and we'll let the computer do that a bunch of times, and that'll look like things are moving across the screen. So later you'll be able to adapt um, your functions to create more sophisticated motion using both coordinates. So, right, <clears throat> it will start off moving just one direction at a time, and then later we'll do both coordinates and when we can move both coordinates then we can move as, as, as any kind of pattern we want. So turn to page 16 in, in your workbook. Let me open that. So we'll turn to page 16 in your workbook. We'll read the problem and see what it wants and then we'll fill out the contract and purpose statement. Write two examples and circle and label what varies between those examples and then actually define the function. So, here's page 16 of your workbook. Use the design recipe to write a function, update danger, which takes in the danger's x coordinate and produces the next x coordinate, which is 50 pixels to the left. So, think about what it needs to take in um, and actually just follow through the um, design recipe. So, Go ahead and pause now and follow through the design recipe, filling in page 16 for the function update danger. And um, you can get me if you run into problems, but go ahead and in your book, write down and fill this out um, before you go on with the rest of the video. Okay, if you're back, that means you have your version filled out. Now I'm going to... Let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to um, do that myself. So hopefully you got um, an update danger that looks like this. Subtract 50 from the danger's x coordinate and have some examples which are going to be different than theirs. Um, and then the um, what the function definition looks like. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to open the game file and find the update danger. We'll see what it looks like and um, add some examples and change the definition if we need to. Then I'm going to save my game file and then we'll see if we can get danger to move across the screen. So you can pause and do this um, after I do, before I do, um, when, whenever you want to. So I'm going to open Let me find 
So don't pay, don't worry about this part. All right, let's see if we remember. Got to find where we put that game stuff. It's easier to find on yours because I only copied it one page. Let's see, maybe it's this one. Yeah, so now you remember in yours, you have a BS1 folder, and then there we have resources, source files. And we can go ahead and we can just save right back to here. We don't need to save the original game because I have a zip file with all of that stuff. So we can just open up game. All right, and then we want to find update danger. All right. So here is update danger, and it doesn't look like it, it's it does so they they, they did the um, header right so um, they they did the function contract so here's the name update danger it's going to take a number it's going to give out a number and given the danger's old x coordinate so that's what this number is going to represent the old x coordinate. I'll put the next x coordinate, um, but it doesn't. They didn't know at that time about the rule, so I'm going to say I'll put the next x, which is um, how did they put it? Fifty less, which is fifty less than the old x coordinate. All right, so let's do some examples. And we're going to say update, danger. And let's see, I always like to do some easy ones. So if we start it at 100, then we want to say 100 minus 50. Right? So that's what this thing is supposed to do. If I get 100, I'm going to get 50 out. But I don't just want to do that calculation myself. I want to make sure that I tell uh, Racket how to do the calculation so that makes it easier for the next steps and for the next example. So let's do a harder example. And let's say uh, it's 231, right? So what do we want to be? So it should be 231 minus 50. So I didn't even have to do that. I could do that in the interactions area if we wanted to, you know, see what that number is. Um, and in fact, we can do that. Let's see. I'm going to go view, show interactions. So we'll do this first one. There's one I know off the top of my head. That answer should be 50, right? Yes. And now let's do this one, which I didn't even try to figure out. I'll let Racket do it. 181. So if we get in 231 for an X coordinate, we want to get out 181. All right, so now we know that. Um, so now we know that instead of giving back X, right, because that's the same coordinate. So currently this update danger function takes in, if it got in 100, it would give back 100. But we know that we want to replace, um, actually, we, let's, let's, what do we want to replace? So what's the difference between these two function bodies? Well, it is the thing that comes in. So we can call that the, let's just call that x. Okay, good. They already did that, right? So that's the thing that's changing is this x coordinate. And so that's what we need to put in for x. So I'm going to. Put in a new expression minus x50. You see how this turned into x50? So this is the thing that changed, 100 or 231. 
So that's the x coordinate. So x doesn't just mean any number in this case, it means the x coordinate. So that's the thing that's changing, so we called it x. And so we put in minus x, the thing that changes, and 50. So I think that should give us um, the correct answer. So let's run that, which will run our examples. And so it's running the whole program, uh, which we saw before, um, just, um, you know, was our static picture. Now that one, do you see the danger move across? So it actually moved the, the danger across, which is fine. But actually what we want to see is if our test ran fine and it, that we didn't get any errors. So that means our test did run fine. So um, somewhere danger, uh, whatever function, whatever calls update danger must have started off with a number on the right hand, you know, a high number. And then it must have called update danger over and over again, and it moved minus 50 across the screen. We can watch that one more time. There it goes. And so we didn't, you know, there's no other, we haven't looked to see what that, how, you know, how this function is used, but we did see it move in chunks of 50 across the screen. So let's see if they want us to do that. All right, we did. We saw danger file across, fly across the screen. We didn't save, though. So I'm going to file and just hit save. Uh, save definitions. Good. All right, now we want to animate target, which moves in the opposite direction. So turn to page 17 in your workbook. Write the function update target, which takes in a target's x coordinate and produces the next x coordinate, which is 50 pixels to the right. So think about how that last one worked, how this one is different, and go ahead and pause the video and write all the contract parts, all the examples, and the function definition for update target. If you have any problems, then come and get me, but go ahead and fill this out uh, before we go on. Okay, so you should have that filled out. Now I'm going to um, do the same thing in the uh, no, uh, yeah, I'm going to let you do it. So um, I'm not going to show you in the video since I already showed you one, but let's make sure we can find it. So we want to find update target, and there it was right after, right after this so um, they move that so there's update target so based on your based on um, what you did on page 17 go ahead and fill out update target and um, some examples and run it and um, find me if you have any problems All right, next time we're going to um, do a, a hidden feature of Ninja Cat called the projectile. And um, then on Friday, we will, um, you'll get a chance to uh, work on your uh, pictures. So right now, you know, it's still using whatever is in the, the file, probably up here in the... Uh, constant definitions, so the danger is a triangle, the target's a circle, and the player is um, the rocket. So um, for your game design, you pick different images, and on Friday of this week, you can um, either use GIMP um, program that you've used before to draw new images, or we can find some pictures to download from the internet. But we'll work on that on Friday. Next time, we will animate the secret um, projectile, um, but before you finish today, make sure that you update your version of update target. Bye.